appointment with your wife. I hadn't forgotten. Are you able to decipher this drivel, sweetie? What is it? Mr. Bevan's handwritten will. Try and type out a translation, eh? Fine. There's a good girl. <laughs> I hear you're taking in lodging. Uh, yes. Well, you can be my landlady any time. <laughs> do you mind? Not if you don't. Well, I do. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You've worked here longer than I have, Miss Godfrey. Would you mind telling me something? What? Is it considered frightfully unprofessional to throw up in Mr. Bagley's face? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Never mind. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. What? It doesn't seem to have been much a success, Mr. Bevan's marriage. He's left £50 to his wife and the bulk of his estate to his parrot. <laughs> Who's a lucky Polly? You're going to be rich, you're going to be rich. <laughs> I am really not interested, Mrs. Haddon. Will you please leave me in peace with my word processing and get back to your typing? All right, all right. I could do without the superior sniff. I beg your pardon? Look, I don't mind your posh computer giving my tatty little typewriter a superior sniff, but I see no reason why you should give me one. Unless, of course, you're a duchess with a runny nose. I think I shall go to lunch now. Oh, don't tell me the miracle machine won't even make you a sandwich. Not even a microchip butty. You are obviously not in the least interested in computers, Mrs. Haddon. No, no, I'm not. In fact, I'd like to give whoever invented them a hefty kick in the software. Spoken like a true computer illiterate. I think I may be computer compatible after all. It's been uphill, but I think it's slowly getting the hang of me. <laughs> oh, my God. Hello. Oh, hello, Mrs. Oh. Bagley. Uh, any messages? Oh. I have an awful feeling we're just oh. about to get one. Oh, Mr. Bagley. What's up? Mrs. Haddon has been at my word processor. I wasn't aware she knew how they work. She well, doesn't. Oh, she didn't. But she was very keen to learn, and, and, and... She has selected the floppy disk for her debut, which had our quarterly accounts on it. What? We've lost most of August and the crucial part of September. Ah, uh, yes, I, I'd like to take this opportunity to apologise profusely for any, any inconvenience I may have caused, and... Well, I'd like to take this opportunity of terminating your part-time employment with us forthwith. Oh, I mean, let's not be hasty, Mr. Bagley. Yes, let's. Look, I'm sure there's a funny side to all this, somewhere. If, if we really look hard. Consider yourself fired, Mrs. Haddon. Seems a trifle harsh, Giles. That could have been me talking, Mrs. Bagley. When I want your advice, I'll ask for it, dearest. Look, I, I need this job. It's the only way I can save for all the little luxuries that make life bearable. You know, like food. Sob, sob, sob. Okay. Right. Now, out. You are a great, square faced, empty headed pile of silicone. And that goes for your computer as well. <laughs> um, solicitors are very keen on the truth, aren't they, Mr. Bagley? The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Absolutely. We value the truth above all things. Well, the truth will out. <laughs> Is this true, Giles? Is what true, Vanessa? It says here you're a lecherous, toad-faced groper. <laughs> I came home and spent the rest of the afternoon in the bath. In the bath? Well, I needed a long, hot soap to de myself. <laughs> you have my sympathy, Mrs. Haddon. 
Another notch on the unemployment statistics. I know the feeling. I'm a notch. You're the all-time notch. Are you going to tell Richard? Oh, well, as guarantor of my bank loan, I suppose I'll have to, in time. I don't think I'll tell him why I was fired, though. Ah, well, tomorrow's another day. No kidding, Henry. <laughs> and who knows what it may bring? Yes. Well, one thing it will bring is Chris's new roommate, Hamish McAlpine. Um. <laughs> Did somebody gulp, or was it the central heating? I only met Hamish the once. Hamish, the airline steward. He gave me a long, lingering look and said, Well, hello. <laughs> Need I say more? Chris seems to think that Hamish is gay. Cool, you've got a lightning mind, Henry. <laughs> is Hamish gay? Look, when they met, Chris was wearing his disc jockey outfit. Let me put it another way. Hamish was confronted with a blow-dried, besequined vision in a black catsuit sparkling with tiny fairy lights. It's hardly surprising. Hamish said, well, hello. <laughs> and what did he expect him to say? Do you fancy a pint and a spot of arm wrestling? <laughs> I don't understand a word of this. Mr. Henry, no pictures. <laughs> oh. Do you know, the more I read, the more I realise how little I actually know about medicine. Well, this is terrific news for your patients. No, no. Carol, he, he doesn't actually have any patients. One of the great things about the NHS is they don't let medical students loose on members of the public till they've sort of got the hang of it. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> you will get the hang of it, won't you, Henry? I suppose so, in time. I'll probably be on the geriatric ward by then, as a patient. <laughs> Well, it's time I was off. Mm. Why don't you have something to eat? Uh, thank you, Mrs. Haddon, but I'm really not hungry. Well, you really shouldn't go to work on a cup of coffee. I if I ate anything now, I'd only regret it at 11. What happens at 11? I'm disemboweling a rat. <laughs> <laughs> then I've suddenly gone right off my shreddies. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the things we have to go through to become doctors. Oh, never mind, Henry. I'm sure there's others worse off than yourself. Like who, I'd like to know. The rat, for a start. <laughs> Well, cheerio, then. Bye. Have a nice day. Are you serious? <laughs> Where's Chris? Yes, I was wondering that. Chris! Are you all right? Cloud nine, Mrs. Haddon. Apart from my career being in ruins and the imminent arrival of the flying Scotsman. <laughs> Monica, nip down and straighten him out, will you? I think you should go. Why me? Well, I can only see his bad points. You've got the advantage of being blinded by lust. Go on. I can't. Well, why not? Because I think I'm beginning to fancy Henry. I'm taking him to a film tonight. He's very clever, you know. Can't be that clever if he's going out with you. Ooh, do I detect a hint of jealousy? No, I'm intrigued by his brain. Well, he's probably the first man you've ever fancied who's had one. <laughs> Morning, Sheila. Morning, Richard. Pipe. Pipe. What can I do for you? If I answer that question honestly, you'll probably slap my face. But for now, I want a word with that airline steward chappy of yours. Well, I'm afraid Hamish hasn't moved in yet. Damn! Why? I need to know how easy it would be to smuggle a portable nuclear device plus a dead body through the customs at Heathrow. If it had been Gatwick, I could have told you. <laughs> how would Hamish know? Presumably he's clued up on airport security. I also need to know what qualifications one needs to be a baggage handler at Jakarta. Why, were you thinking of applying? Writing a blockbuster is no laughing matter, Sheila. Till, of course, one sells the film right. It was your idea I turned to fiction. I'm sorry, Richard. I will ask Hamish just as soon as he touches down. Still, wasn't a wasted journey. I could tell you the plot of my blockbuster instead. The plot? It's immensely ingenious, but rather complicated. Can't wait. Oh! <laughs> Chris? Mum sent me down to cheer you up. Good idea. Hop in. No, thanks. Look, how would 
would you feel if I told you that Hamish wasn't gay? I'd feel he needed a brain scan. Look in the way I do, just have its disadvantages, Monica. It makes me irresistible to both sexes. Oh, this is news to me. You're one of the most resistible people I've ever met. Yeah, well, luckily for my libido, you're heavily outnumbered by discerning women like Carol. Which reminds me, I've got a treat in store for her tonight. Yeah, well, you have to join the queue. Hey? She's taking Henry to see a film. But I've got tickets for Dire Straits tonight. I bought them weeks ago. It's going to be a surprise. Still, all is not lost. I'll take you instead. Hey? Think of it. Dire Straits and me. Can you believe your luck? Oh, I'm sorry, but I've got other plans. Oh, yeah, what plans? I'll think of something. <laughs> Look, um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll try and sell your spare Dire Straits ticket to someone at college this afternoon. Oh, good idea. It's, uh, it's a numbered seat, bang next to mine, uh, so make sure you sell it to somebody else fancy. i better sell it straight back to you, then. <laughs> And so, having saved the world for civilization, Grip Lomax does what he would have done much earlier if he hadn't been quite so busy. <laughs> oh, marvelous, marvelous. Namely, slip between the sheets with the lovely Antonia. That's about it. Oh, are you sure you're going to be able to pack all that into 600 pages? One can but try. I think you'll agree it's a fairly exciting plot. Ooh. <laughs> have you got a title? I'm toying with the idea of rendezvous with fear. How's that sound to you? It sounds like my last interview with the bank manager. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, I like it, Richard. I do. I think this book is a winner. And I like your hero, Grip Lomax. It's an unusual name. Lomax? Grip. <laughs> well, what would you prefer I call him? Cyril? <clears throat> this man is a one-off, Sheila. Grip Lomax is going to make James Bond look like Russell Harty. <laughs> Richard? Yes? There's just one thing bothers me in all of this. And what's that? It's the thought of you typing it all out by yourself. Ah, now, well, I know I've seen you type. You use a maximum of two fingers. Yes. You could be typing this book for the rest of your life. I am writing it out in longhand. I plan to have each chapter typed out by a pro. Oh, if only I could help you in some way. Ah, but you're far too busy with your job no, and the house. No, but for the sake of English literature, I would no. sacrifice my job. I would not well, hear it. all right, let me put it another way. I've been fired. <laughs> Good God. Whatever for. Well, uh, uh, well, Scrimgeour and Bagley have started drinking very heavily. But they've lost half their clients, and so, you know, they, they had to lay me off. You do surprise me. I always thought Scrimshaw and Bagley were pretty solid. No, nope, not anymore. Strictly liquid. <laughs> Sheila, hmm? is this the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help me God, not a word of it. Mm. <laughs> what does it matter? You know, we were just non-computable. Compatible, really. But I will do a good job for you, Richard. My trusty portable awaits. You won't regret this, sir, I promise. Shall I, um, pop home and fetch chapter one? Oh, Yes, please. And Richard, I thank you from the bottom of my bank balance. Oh, Who is probably erecting a barbed wire room divider even as we speak? Why do people always assume that airline stewards are gay? No, you mustn't confuse Chris with people. <laughs> He's having to cope with being the most desirable man on earth. Oh, it's hell for the poor boy. God, you should hear the stream of sexist chat. Yeah, Monica thinks he should have his own sexist chat show. <laughs> How's your sexist chat, Hamish? I don't follow. Well, Chris is assuming that you're gay, right? Mm hmm oh, Wouldn't it be a shame to disappoint him? This is all very cosy. <laughs> cosy? Bedsits can be such lonely places, can't they? But I'm sure I won't be lonely. Not with you here. <laughs> I I'm a bit of a loner, Hamish. I, I like my own company. And I'm sure I will, too. <laughs> so, you're an airline steward, eh? I? And you? Oh, I'm rapidly working my way up to the top in show business. <gasps> I'll be the envy of every steward at Heathrow. Eh? 
fancy. Little old me sharing with someone in showbiz. Uh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I, I don't want you to get too excited about this, Hamish. And I'm sure you will get to the top, Chris, because you have a fantastic aura. <laughs> aura? But should you ever decide to change your career, well, I'm sure all the other stewards and I could squeeze up and make room for you at Heathrow. <laughs> Mind you, the job does have its ups and downs. So I've heard. I mean, take yesterday. I was involved in some very heavy turbulence over the Indian Ocean. Leslie and I were rattling around the galley like there was no tomorrow. Oh, so... So, uh, now listen, I, I've got something fairly important to say now, Hamish. Uh, so listen carefully. Um, I'm, I'm heavily into women. Oh. And it's no secret that women are heavily into me. So? So, 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 uh, so the last thing I need is you sidling over in the small hours and whispering, I'm Hamish, fly me. <laughs> what I don't understand is, well... You're Hamish McAlpine, right? Mm. I thought the McAlpines were as butch as they come. And only really interested in macho things like building motorways. <laughs> oh, I've no contact with that branch of the clan. But they sound a sweaty bunch. <laughs> yes, well, just don't try anything, that's all. As far as you're concerned, this is a total exclusion zone. <laughs> is all very impressive, Sheila, but um, when were you planning to start? I'm not just any old typist, Richard. I'm an artiste of the keyboard. I'm quite sure Liberace doesn't have naval gentlemen breathing down his neck when he's warming up. Oh, I don't know, though. <laughs> right. Here it goes. Gosh. Two fingers. Impressed? Well, yes and no. Meaning? Well, you've managed to destroy the tone of the piece already by seriously misspelling my hero's name. Grip? Well, not anymore, apparently. Oh, yes, yes, it seems to have become drip, doesn't it? <laughs> um, Richard, I, I think it might be better if you just sort of left me to it. You know, we artists can't really operate to our optimum when we're being surveyed. Understood. Liberace. Oh, thank you. Evening. Oh, hello, Henry. How was the rat? Ah. Not too pleased, I'd he, imagine. He's past caring now. He's gone to a better place. May he rest in pieces. Oh, please, no more. Henry, this is Hamish. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Oh, Carol, uh, any thoughts on what film you'd like to see tonight? Oh, yes. Rambo. Rambo? He doesn't sound too keen. Well, doesn't that involve Sylvester Stallone wiping out most of Southeast Asia? Oh, I'm sure he does it in the best possible taste. Carol, <laughs> Henry's been up to his ears in innards all day. Last thing he wants to unwind is more of the same. Evening. Hi. Evening, Chris. <laughs> There you go. I sold you die straights ticket. And it wasn't easy. You should pay me commission. Who did you sell it to? Somebody tasty, I hope. Oh, uh, a bit flat-chested, I'm afraid, Chris. But nice looking. Please, Monica, you're making me blush. <laughs> hey? Well, we'd better get a move on if we're going to catch the supporting band. Nobody at college had any money. The Hamish did. So that was lucky, wasn't it? If I get any luckier, I might kill myself. <laughs> Are you coming or not? <laughs> it's nice that they're getting on so well, isn't it? Tell me something, Chris. What's that? Are you always this nervous on the first date? <laughs> How's it going, Mum? Fine. Antonia crept onto the balcony in her torn negligee and peered into the night. Grip, she whispered. 
come to me. Suddenly she felt a tiny prickle in the nape of her neck. She swung round to see Otto fingering the tip of his... Stiletto. His blubbery lips parted over his yellow stained teeth in a cruel smirk. And her heart sank as he dragged her back to the unspeakable horrors of his bed. Go on. Certainly not. It's far too filthy. Mind you, it's a lot cleaner than anything I had to type out at Scrimshaw and Bagley. No, this is the life, Monica. Just me and my trusty portable and not a floppy disk in sight. No, nothing floppy about grip. <laughs> the clouds have parted. The sun has got his hat on. The doorbell is ringing. Excuse me. Oh, Richard, you haven't brought around chapter two already. No, I've been far too busy. I've had a brilliant notion, Sheila. Have you? You see, it occurred to me that the logistics of rendezvous with fear are going to require more organisation than a royal wedding. Uh, and it was the thought of you typing out countless rewrites that prompted my blinding flash of inspiration. What you need is a word processor, and here it is. Uh, <laughs> I knew you'd be pleased. You ever come across these things? <laughs> Quite apart from simplifying your typing, we can also program this machine to keep tabs on what all of my characters are up to, which is just as well because I've lost track of half of them already. Uh, no no I, I actually, need I, I, for I, I, words, I, Sheila. I know what you're thinking. Uh, you're thinking this is the best idea I've ever had. Oh. <laughs> the salesman assures me they're an absolute doddle to operate, so have no fears on that score. It is just a question of following the instructions. <laughs> so... Who's a clever boy, then? Oh, Richard, what can I say? Thank you somehow seems so inadequate. <laughs> now, my brain is superior to yours, all right? You may be able to memorize a lot of useless information, but there are many things that I can do that you can't. For example, I can do this. <laughs> And I can do this. <laughs> and I can also do this. <laughs> <laughs>